Well, hello, I am Carrie Davidson. I'm the Move Well Fitness Manager here for UK Health and Wellness. So today's topic is fitness self-care. And I am showing my screen here and advancing my slides. So if there's a problem with that, somebody speak up and let me know. But this is where we're headed today. I'd like to give you an overview, let you know what we're gonna talk about, uh, how it's gonna go, and then give you some really tangible examples of the things that I'm gonna be talking about today. So we're gonna talk about the difference between productivity and procrastination. They both start with pro, which means before or first. So we're gonna talk about that. Organizing your time, establishing your priorities, and then how to build your focus. So what I really would like for you to understand is that fitness is something that we do. It doesn't happen to us, we happen to it. So. Keep that in mind as we move throughout our discussion today. So what uh, is the big P? <laughs> as you might imagine, I've been doing this for quite some time. I've been in the wellness industry and in this fitness space for about 20 years now, a little bit more than 20 years probably, uh, if you count the time that I started in, uh, in high school and whatnot. So I have heard every excuse there is not to exercise, not to move around. Uh, you know, there have been different generations that have brought around different cultural shifts of what it looks like to be active. Um, I feel like there is a whole generation of people who think sweating is bad, a whole generation of people who think um, that exercise is only for a certain group, that they're not in that group, it's, it's exclusive instead of inclusive. And so I'm hoping that you'll be able to dispel a lot of those myths today. But procrastination is definitely one of the major excuses that we get stuck in. I know that I am not a morning person, never have been. I run two fitness centers. You'll never see me in there at five o'clock working out. <laughs> you, you might see me in there at 5 a.m. working uh, because I have to be, but you'll never see me working out in the morning. That is not my time of day. That's not when I have the most energy. That sleep chronotypes could be a discussion for a different day, but if I plan to work out in the morning, which is a bad choice for me, I know I'm going to hit the snooze. I'm probably going to hit the snooze any day. I hit the snooze this morning. So I will work out in 10 minutes when my snooze goes off. And then I'm up late and then I'm trying to get ready for work. And then I'm like, oh, I don't have time now. I'll do it after work. And then five o'clock hits and it's, oh, I'm too tired. I'll work out in the morning. And we get stuck in this vicious cycle. And it's all because we procrastinate at the very start of the cycle. So this is sort of what a timeline of procrastination looks like. This is just not me. I think some people have uh, the personality that likes to get things done early. They like to be early to meetings. They like to be early to parties. They don't want to turn anything in late. And then there is the opposite. So everybody is made a little bit different. And then the procrastination happens when you go, oh, I have plenty of time to do that. Something comes in your email box, something hits, your phone or you get a message in Teams and you go, oh, I'll do that later. And you put it to the side. And then the time gets shorter. Well, there's time tomorrow, I'll get to that. And then eventually you're coming up on that deadline and you have a, <laughs> like this little graph shows you have maybe some expletives that run through your mind that you want to say or write. And so here's the thing that I have learned is that if we do it immediately and get it off the table, as soon as it pops in our head, then the procrastination cycle ends there. And so we can come up with any excuse to procrastinate. We can come up with any excuse not to do something. I'm tired, I'm too cold, I'm too hot, it's raining, it's too late. But the bottom line is, like I said before, fitness doesn't happen to you, you have to make it happen for you. So let's keep that in mind as we move through. So instead of the big P being procrastination, Let's talk about some ways that we can make the big P productivity. What is productive movement? And so wherever you are, I'm, I am working from home today. I, I have a hybrid schedule. So whether you're at home, you're in an office, wherever you are, I want you to stand up and sit down and do it two more times. Stand up and sit down and one more time. Stand up and sit down. <laughs> good, good job. I'm hoping all of you did that. Now, what you have just done is three squats. Congratulations on your workout for today. <laughs> Remember that every little bit counts. 
And so the things that we do throughout our day, we can be a little bit more productive in them. We stand up and sit down all day long. We sit in our chair and we get up. We go to the bathroom and we get up. We get in our car and we get up and we sit at a table and we get up. So we do that sit to stand all day long. And that's essentially a squat. That's essentially an exercise. It's a very functional exercise because it's something that we have to do in our daily lives just to move around the cabin, right? And so what I wanna encourage you to do is use those things as triggers to be more productive in your movement. So anytime that you stand up to go do something, stand up and sit down three times, like we just did. That took maybe 10 seconds for us to do that three times. You do that every single time, you'll have 50 squats by the end of the day. There are definitely ways to make that harder. You might not actually hit the chair. You might stand up, pretend like you're going to sit and come back up again. And so you really are making that a little bit more difficult. If you're holding something, that makes it more difficult because you're increasing the intensity, right? Because you're loading that squat. So make the movement that you're already doing through your day a more productive, a more productive kind of movement. The next thing I want you to do is take a writing utensil or something that's sitting close to you. It doesn't have to be heavy. I'm going to take my pen here and drop it in the floor. Drop it in the floor. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute, I'm at the wrong presentation. Drop it in the floor. Now, don't bend down to pick it up. I want you to pretend like you're gonna take a knee. Take a knee, reach down there and get it and come back up again. You've just done a lunge, my friend. Now go do it on the other side. <laughs> so anytime that we're picking something up and we take a knee, that sort of movement where we're just going down on one leg and then we can go down on the other leg, that's a lunge. Do you have a long hallway? You could lunge all the way down and all the way back. There are lots of ways to get productive movement through your day. If there is something that you need to pick up in the floor, and I'm not gonna make you do this one, don't worry, just because I can't see your form, is hinging at the hips, pick it up and bring it back up again, that's a deadlift. All of these things are very functional movements, things that we do every single day. All we have to do is tack on a few extras as we do those things through our day and we're getting more productive movement through today. So I hope that that makes sense for y'all. And then the other thing that I wanna suggest is that even when um, you're doing activities of daily living, not related to work, that you can take your time and make those things count. Um, if you've got your reactions on your Zoom land there where you can send little hearts and thumbs up and raise your hand and clap and all those things, I want you to throw me out an emoji if you do dishes in your house. Me, I do. I do dishes in my house. If you do laundry in your house. Yep, me too. I do laundry in my house. So these are great opportunities to take your time and make those activities count. They're things that we have to do, just like we have to go to work and do those things. Those are things that we have to do. So there are lots of ways to make that a more productive movement. For example, one thing that I do, I, if it, I do all the laundry, whatever I'm gonna do, put it on my bed, I fold it all, make everybody a pile, but then I'll take a, a one child, walk it to his room and come back. Take another pile, walk that child to that room and come back. Pick up another pile, well, I have three kids, so I do this three times. Walk that child's clothes to their room and come back. Now I could throw it all in a basket and make one trip, but I'm trying to be more productive through my day and make all those movements count and try to get as much movement as possible. That's the name of the game, getting as much movement as possible. So I'll make three trips to each child's bedroom. And I'll make another trip to the bathroom to take towels and another trip to the kitchen to take dish towels and whatever. So make those trips count. You could do the same thing when you're doing dishes. If you unload the dishwasher, pick up a whole pile of plates, stack them up on the counter. And now you've got some weight. Now you're doing a little resistance training. Then you can lift them up and put them in the cabinet. And you've got a little bit of upper, upper body movement here with a little bit of a load. So if you're using glass plates or whatever it is that you're taking out of your dishwasher. So there are ways to make our um, movement that we already do, our ambient movement is what we call that during the day, more productive. So that's, that's one way. So don't do the procrastination thing. I'll do that later, I'll do that later. Do it right then and make it count. Add a, a few extra squats, add a few extra lunges, add a few extra deadlifts, add a few extra pieces to that, and you're going to get way more bang for your buck. 
The other thing is functional movement. So again, these are all things that we are doing through our day. We all raise our hands. We do dishes, we do laundry, we probably do yard work, we do all sorts of things. And so those are very functional movements. And I think I've, I've probably given a presentation to this group before about functional movement and how picking up toys out of the floor or picking up anything off the floor is the exact same thing as a bent over row. And just like we talked about sitting down and standing up from your chair is a squat. All of those things are functional movements that we do every single day. So that's one way to also be more productive with our movement. And then another thing is to make our movements dynamic. We didn't just do this, right? We didn't just do a little curl with an ink pen and make, <laughs> that's not very functional. First of all, we don't do this every day, but it's also only covering one muscle group and one joint. So what we really want to do is make it more dynamic, big muscle groups, lots of muscle groups, and more than one joint. So consider, for example, if we're using gym examples, consider a bicep curl where all we do is this. All we do is work our bicep. That's not a very dynamic movement. We got the elbow and we got the bicep. Super. But if we were to grab a hold of ropes and pull those back and squeeze the shoulder blades and go back and forth in a row position, then we've got elbows, shoulders, chest, subscapularis, lats, traps. Oh, we've got all kinds of muscles going in there. So we've got a whole bunch more muscles and a whole bunch more joints. So we want to make the, mus the movements as dynamic as we can, covering as many muscle groups and as many joints as possible. Okay, so that's how we make our movement more productive. Now, everybody has 24 hours. I'd like to know if anybody has more than 24 hours in the day, if you could please raise your hand and you could take over this presentation. <laughs> we have 24 hours in our day, all of us. And so we have to prioritize and organize our time in a way that makes sense for our life. I am not here to tell you that you need to go spend four hours a day in the gym. That is not practical for most of us. Um, so one of the best ways to organize your, your time as far as when you do go to the gym or when you do work out at home or when you do get some exercise in is to superset. And that sounds like a really scary thing. It's not a scary word. It just means that instead of doing a set of exercises and then waiting 90 seconds or two minutes and resting and then going back and then resting and then going back and then resting and then moving to the next thing, that's very time consuming. So what we can do is put them together and eliminate the rest periods. And here's how we do that in a scientifically research-based way, is that we, we make a push-pull routine. So for example, if I push something, this could be a push-up, this could be a bench press, this could be a chest press. If I push something, I also want to pull it. So now I'm going to pull it back as a row. So if I push in a, in a bench press, I'm going to pull it back in a row. So what I'm doing is I'm working the chest muscle as the prime mover when I push. Now I'm letting that chest muscle rest and I'm using the back muscles as the prime mover as I pull. That way I've eliminated rest periods altogether. These rest while these work and these work and while these rest. So we were eliminating that. So that's one way to superset something is if you push it in one plane, you should pull it in the same plane. Planes being this way or this way. Another way to superset is to swap back and forth between upper body, upper that UE is a U, upper extremity and LE is lower extremity, upper body exercise, lower body exercise. So I might go do a chest exercise, let the upper body rest while I go do a leg exercise. And then I'll let the legs rest while I go do another chest exercise and go back and forth that way. That way you're eliminating rest periods and you're getting a little bit more bang for your buck as far as time. So those are the two most common ways to superset. Another way that we can save time and organize our time whenever we're working out is through circuits, HIIT workouts, and Tabata. And I'm going to give you guys some examples of what these look like. A, a circuit um, exercise just means that we think about it like a circle and we do something and then we switch it. And then we do something and then we switch it and we never rest, but then we go through it a second time. Maybe we go through it a third time. So it works like a circuit. A hit is a high intensity interval training. So we go high intensity for a short period of time and then we have a rest a short period of time. But the fact that it's high intensity doesn't mean like, 
oh, we work hard. It means it's high intensity. You work as hard as you can for a very short amount of time. And that way you get more bang for your buck. It's just another way to do vigorous exercise. And then a Tabata protocol is a four minute workout. Yes, you heard me right. A four minute workout. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you some examples of these three, circuit, hit, and Tabata. So a circuit workout might look like this. So you can see on the left side of the column there, I've got a couple of cardiovascular exercises in red with whatever exercise you want to put in there, exercise one, two, three, four, and five in black. And I can see now that I have five twice. You might want to put a sixth one in there. Um, so you might do 30 seconds of jumping jacks and then go do a lifting exercise and then go do 30 seconds of high knees and then go do a different lifting exercise and then do 30 seconds of shadow boxing and go do a different exercise. So that we're, we're going back and forth between cardio and strength. And then we're going to repeat that circuit maybe two times. So you can put whatever exercises you want in there for exercise one, two, three, four, five, and six. This might be um, a push up, a sit up, you know, a bench press, a squat. It could be anything. So that's just sort of your template. Okay. That's a template for a circuit workout. So that's one way to organize our time when we're in the gym so that we spend less time um, doing whatever in the gym and spending more time doing the exercises so that we can cut down the total time. The next one is a HIT workout. And we teach a lot of HIT workouts virtually um, in our online membership, our virtual membership um, for group fitness classes. And then they're also on our on-demand library if you're a MoveWall member. So this is a 10-minute HIT workout. So like I said, high intensity interval training. So for 30 seconds, you're going to do squats, a single arm push up on the right, and a single arm push up on the left, and then plank jacks. Now you're going to go as hard as you can, 30 seconds for each one of those, right? So 30 seconds air, 30 seconds right, 30 seconds left, 30 second plank jacks, and then a 30 second rest. That equals two and a half minutes. Yes. And then 30, the next column over, again, you're going to do 30 seconds of each of these. Skaters, side plank right, side plank left, and then tricep dips, and then a 30 second rest. That equals another two and a half minutes. So together, that's five minutes. You repeat the whole thing two times, and you've got a high intensity interval workout of 10 minutes. This is also a pretty balanced workout because we've got lower body and upper body. And it's all body weight, as you can see. You don't, it doesn't require any weights, any bands, any special equipment. It's all just body weight and they can be modified to your level. So we don't necessarily need to get into all of the, the details of that workout, but this is a template, just like the circuit one was a template that you could sub in any exercise in the black. HIT is another template. There's lots of ways to structure a HIT workout. This is my favorite way to structure a HIT workout. And then you could change out those exercises as well to anything that you wanted them to be if you had a particular goal. And then the last one that I mentioned for organizing your time is a Tabata. And traditional Tabata protocol is four minutes. And so this means you go 20 seconds as hard as you can and then 10 seconds of easy. So you might just, you might just walk in place or march in place or something like that for easy. And you do eight rounds so that it's four minutes. Now I've given you 10 options there for exercises. You might just do the whole thing in burpees or the whole thing in crunches. That would be tough by the way. Um, or you might change them out every single time because you're doing eight rounds. So you might, you might choose eight of those exercises and do each one. So again, it's just a template for organizing your time, ways to save time, when you're doing a workout. So a Tabata is a HIIT workout. It's just a specific protocol of 20 seconds hard, 10 seconds easy, eight rounds equals four minutes. So lots of options. And again, those exercises that I have listed here, all body weight exercises, they don't require any equipment. They don't require any weights, things that you can do, just ways to move your body that, um, that make sense and to be productive and to organize your time. All right, so we've, on our agenda at the beginning, I told you we we're going to talk about procrastination versus productive movement. We were going to talk about our organizing our time. And then the next one is our priorities. So anytime that you either work out on your own, you hire a trainer, you watch a video on YouTube, 
anytime that you are working out and you're looking for a complete, balanced, healthy exercise routine or workout, you want to make sure that you've got five movement patterns, okay? We want to move our bodies in these five ways to keep it as healthy as we can as long as possible. And so those five movement patterns, and you'll see us stick to these almost all the time, is a push and a pull. As I mentioned earlier, that's a time saver to push and then to pull. But what we want to do is make sure that we do a push-pull of our major muscle groups. So I want you to think about hips, glutes, legs, back. This area to the tops of the knees. Think about that. So we want to push that and pull that. So we might do that with a squat and a deadlift. Uh, if it were upper body, we might do that with an overhead press and a lat pull down. So a push and a pull. If you push it forward, you want to pull it back. If you push it up, you want to pull it down. If you push it back, you want to pull it forward. So whatever direction you're going in, out, up, down, if you push it, you want to pull it so that the muscles on both sides of those joints are balanced. So think about your knee. It's a hinge joint. It works just like that. We want our quads and our hamstrings to be of equal strength. So then when we pull the knee up, that's just as strong as when we pull the, the leg down and, and bend the knee the other direction. So if we have a pull on one side of the knee that's stronger than the other side, then that's when we get into problems and injuries and pain in the knee. So we want balance of a push-pull. Okay, so if we push it, we want to pull it. The next movement pattern that we want to keep in mind is a hip hinge. And I told you earlier when we were doing our little squats and lunges, I didn't want you to do a deadlift because I can't see you and I didn't want to, I wanted to watch your form. So hinging at the hips, I want you to consider the way your body is shaped. We all have the generally same shape. We're all made of, of femurs, spines, quadriceps, hamstrings, glutes. We all have the same makeup, essentially. So think about the bones that are the biggest and the muscles that are the biggest femur bone, the long bone of the leg, that's the longest, biggest bone in your body compared to your spine. Little tiny vertebrae that stack up the spine. One's very big and strong, and the others are very small and not nearly as strong. Then consider the muscles that are attached to them. We have big old quadricep on the front of the thigh, big old hamstring on the back of the thigh, big old glutes around the hips, abs, Whereas on the spine, we have the ones that are closest to the spine are little tiny muscles that go up the spine. They're little. So the bones in the hip and the legs and the glutes, those bones and muscles are made to take a big load because they're big. Our spine with the little muscles are not made to take a big load. So what that means is when we move, especially in a forward bend fashion, we want to hinge at the hips, put the load where the load belongs, back here in the glutes and the hamstrings. What we don't want to do is round the spine, right? We don't want to load those little bones and little muscles. We're going to blow something. We want to put the load where the load belongs in the big muscles and the big bones. So we want to practice our hip hinge. So our hip hinge, hinging at the hips and back up again, hinging at the hips and back up again. So you might be doing a deadlift here. You might do a hip hinge for um, a bent over row. You might use that hip hinge in a lot of different ways. So if we push it, we want to pull it. We want a hip hinge so that we always put the big load where the load belongs. And then we want to do something single leg. So that's like that lunge that I showed you at the beginning when you dropped your pin in the floor and I said, take a knee and pick it up, that's a lunge. And so really what we wanna do is keep our body in balance also from right to left. So if we do it with our right arm, we wanna do it with our left arm. If we do it with our right leg, we wanna do it with our left leg. So anything that is standing on one foot, whether you're just standing there balancing or doing some sort of single leg deadlift or a lunge, anything that's a single leg movement, is going to help our balance, our proprioception, our core strength, and help keep us balanced from right to left. So push it, pull it, hinge at the hips, put that big load where that load belongs, one leg at a time, make sure you work one at a time as well as in tandem. And then finally, a rotation. 
Our spine is meant to move in all six directions, a forward, a backward, a side bend to both sides and a rotation to both sides. And so we wanna make sure that we continue to practice that rotation so that we can do things like look over our shoulder when we're driving or look over the other shoulder when we're driving or turn around and take care of ourselves in the bathroom or in the shower. Those are things that I wanna stay doing myself as independently as possible. And I'm sure that's probably the case across the board. So practicing those rotational exercises definitely help in that, in that way. So moving the spine in all six directions. So these are the priorities. This is what we wanna keep in mind as our big overarching principles of our workout. So if we don't have time to do anything else, we wanna get these five, get the big five. That's what we call these ones, the big five. So as far as our focus, our fitness focus for self-care, there are really three main focuses, focus, foci, focuses. <laughs> Cardio is definitely one of the focal areas for our fitness. We want 30 minutes of big movements every day. That might be parking your car 10 minutes away and so you've got 10 minutes to the office, 10 minutes out of the office. Maybe you walk to a meeting for five minutes and walk back for five minutes. You've accumulated 30 minutes. So we want 30 minutes, big movements every single day. And I'm giving you the ACSM guidelines. The American College of Sports Medicine puts forth these guidelines. And so I'm just giving you sort of the big ones, okay, and very general. We can talk details if you all have questions for sure. The next focus is going to be resistance training. This is where your goal really comes into play and it is dependent on what you want to do. Do you want to be a bodybuilder and have big muscles and lift heavy things? Do you want to lose a bunch of weight? Do you want to train for a marathon? Do you want to train for a competition? Like all those goals are different and we're going to train you differently for every single one of those. So when it comes to resistance training, I want you to focus on the five movement patterns at least twice a week but not two days in a row. So all five movement patterns, two to three days a week, at least two, but never two days in a row. Those are your overarching guidelines and principles. Now I did put the chart in here because I said, resistance training is very goal dependent. I'm gonna train you way different if you're trying to gain weight versus lose weight or you know lift heavy things as opposed to have muscular endurance, which is more of a time-based. So this is a general guideline here. You can see across the bottom, this is your, your rep max, how many times you could lift that weight. And then up the side is your training goal. And then across the top is also um, the same as the bottom, so sets and reps. So if you are looking for muscular strength, you want to lift really heavy things. I want to lift a car. I want to lift a hay bale. I want to lift something heavy, then this is where you want to stay. You want to increase that weight, that load, but you're not gonna do it very many times. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, on this corner, is muscular endurance. I don't necessarily wanna lift a car. I don't necessarily wanna lift really heavy things. I wanna be able to take my laptop to work and to home and to here and to there and to pick up my groceries and do all those medium-sized things, but I want to do it all day long. Then we're talking about muscular endurance. We're gonna decrease the amount of weight that we're lifting, but increase the sets and reps. So those are sort of opposite ends of the spectrum. And I'm just hitting these two. So really goal dependent. This is where it really comes in handy if you do have a trainer. And as UK employees, all of you have access to MoveWell, which is our employee dedicated fitness center where we have trainers. Um, once you remember, they're free. So um, if this is something that you're interested in doing and you want more information on, then for sure you could set up either a consult with me or a training session with one of my trainers. So focus number one, go back a second, cardio, 30 minutes, big movement patterns. Focus number two, resistance training, keeping our muscles strong. Focus number three is going to be our flexibility and mobility. If we don't take our joints through their full range of motion, we lose it. If we don't use it, we lose it. So we want to make sure we get all the major muscle groups, all the joints, and take them through their full range of motion. So your shoulder, for example, is a ball and socket joint. 
And so it can go all directions, circumduction this way. It can go all directions this way. It can go back here. So we want to make sure we do that. If we don't, it's going to get harder and harder and harder to do those things. Same thing with the hip, the elbow, the knee, the wrist, the fingers, everything, all the joints. Uh, we want to take through their full range of motion, stretch the muscles to their longest capacity. And if we don't, then they, they will tighten up over time and they, they lose their elasticity and they lose their flexibility. So I, I, I don't know if we'll have time at the end, but I threw an example in here. Uh, this is a chair yoga class that I did for us. And it's like about eight or 15 minutes. I think it's eight minutes. I don't know that we're going to have time to necessarily look through that. But if you're going to get these slides at the end, then you'll get that link. So I just wanted to put that in there for you guys. All right. So I'm going to give you some examples because I know sometimes we work from home. Sometimes we're in the office. Sometimes we're in the gym. It doesn't have to be all or one or none. It can be today I'm working at home. So I'm going to get some extra exercise at home. Today I'm working in the office. So I'm going to get some extra workouts in the office. And tomorrow I actually get to go to the gym. So I'm going to go to the gym. So I've given you a three, two, one here. Our home example is three sets. So if you're working from home and you could you could manipulate these, walk the block. 30 minutes at some point in your day, walk the block. If you don't live on a block, walk a circle, walk a, walk a straight line back and forth, walk the stairs. Some sort of 30 minutes of cardiovascular exercise. And again, it doesn't have to be all at the same time. It could be 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at lunch, 10 minutes in the afternoon. And then 15 body weight squats. We did this. We've already done three. You got 12 to go <laughs> for your first set. 15 push ups, 15 door frame pulls, 15 lunge with a twist, 15 down dog push ups, 15 dead bugs, 15 single leg bridge. This hits all the things. We have our five major muscle groups, or I mean, our five movement patterns. We have all our muscle groups. And we're going to do three sets of 15 because these are just body weight exercises. So again, unload the dishwasher, put away the laundry, pick up stuff from the floor. All of these things at home are, are opportunities for us to get more movement through the day. That's a home example. How about a gym example? This would be two sets of eight. Again, going to depend on the goals, but I've written this one for a two sets of eight sort of workout. So 10 minutes of cardio to begin with. This serves as our warm up. It serves as 10 minutes of that 30 minutes of cardio that we're going to get. And then what we want to do is superset it, as I mentioned, eight squats, eight bench, eight rows, go back and do it again. So we're going to do it two times, eight squat, eight bench, eight row, check it off. We're done with that. Next set, this one, this one, this one, two times, this one, this one, this one, and then knock it off so that we've got two sets all the way through of all of these. So we end up with two sets of eight of whatever that looks like in the gym for you. So that's a gym example. And then an office example would be um, parking, like I mentioned, parking further away, walk to the office, that's 10 minutes. Then we have at eight o'clock, set a reminder. You're gonna set a reminder every hour on your calendar. And at eight o'clock, you're gonna do 10 of those sit to stands like we just did, which is essentially a squat. 9 a.m. when that alarm goes off, you're going to do desk push-ups. Put your hands on the desk, straighten your body out, do push-ups on the desk. You're going to do 10 of them. At 10 o'clock, when the door, when the alarm goes off, you're going to do 10 door open and closes so that you're doing rows, doing both sides. At 11 o'clock, how about using your rolly chair to do some crunches? I'm in a rolling chair right now. You could do crunches. At noon, go take another 10-minute walk. So we're up to 20 minutes, and we've got all of our morning exercises done. At one, two, three, and four, we're going to repeat eight, nine, 10, 11. And then at five o'clock, we walk 10 minutes to our car, get our last 10 minutes in for 30 minutes. And all you've done is taken maybe 90 seconds at every hour, maybe two minutes at every hour to do a few exercises at work. So there's you a work example, a home example, and a gym example. So the thing to remember about fitness for self-care is that we cannot continue to be the best employee, the best spouse, the best mother, the best father, the best whatever hats we wear if we are not our own best self. And you cannot pour from an empty cup. We cannot give to others if we are not full ourselves. And so the same thing is true 
for fitness. It's going to be hard to be a role model. It's going to be hard to be an example. It's going to be hard to keep up our energy. It's going to be hard to keep up with all the things that we need to pick up and move and laundry and dishes and whatever it is that you do during the day. It's going to be much harder if we don't have something to pour from, if we don't already have a base. So if, if you remember nothing else from this presentation, I want you to remember that. <laughs> you can't pour from an empty cup. And then I have given you a few resources here. Our webpage is our is where all of our physical activity resources are, our health and wellness page, and then our, our excuse me, our health and wellness dashboard. So anything that you do with health and wellness, if you want to register for classes or dietitians or health coaches or any of those things, that all happens through your health and wellness dashboard. Um, and that's that second link. And then finally, just our email address. If you have any questions at all, then you can go through the health and wellness email address and that will get to the correct person. So thank you guys for joining me today. And now I want to make sure that we've got some time for questions. 